U.S. prosecutors charged the British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell with grooming young girls for her former boyfriend, the convicted paedophile Jeffrey Epstein. She pretended to be a woman they could trust. All the while, she was setting them up to be sexually abused by Epstein and, in some cases, by Maxwell herself. The British government lifts COVID-19 quarantine requirements for arrivals from Germany, France and Spain and Italy, with a more comprehensive list to follow. One of Hong Kong's leading pro-democracy campaigners flees the territory following China's imposition of a new security law. Record numbers for coronavirus infections in America, but also for new jobs. The US economy tries to get back on track as cases soar. The UK and the EU have said that serious differences remain over a post-Brexit trade deal following more negotiations in Brussels. The latest round of talks are, first, are the first to be held in person since the COVID-19 crisis. The UK has ruled out extending the December deadline to reach a deal. Federal police in Australia are asking prosecutors to consider charges against a journalist accused of publishing classified information. Last year, officers seized thousands of documents over a 2017 ABC investigation, which alleged Australian armed forces had committed war crimes in Afghanistan. The broadcaster has called the move a disturbing development. New York City is usually swarming with tourists at this time of year, visiting for the 4th of July fireworks or a Broadway show. But the coronavirus pandemic has knocked the tourism industry sideways, with international travelers grounded. And now visitors from 16 U.S. states with high infection rates must having to quarantine upon arrival. Colombian security forces have arrested eight left-wing rebels for their alleged involvement in a deadly car bomb attack against a police academy last year. The ELN said it carried out the attack, which killed 22 people in the capital, Bogota. A group of hospital doctors has warned the pressure on NHS staff over COVID-19 may get worse before it gets better and have called for flu jabs for all over 50s. The Royal College of Physicians warns that a normal winter flu season on top of a potential second wave of coronavirus infections could bring the health service to what it calls a grinding halt. It also wants to start the flu vaccination programme earlier than usual. The United States has reported a record number of coronavirus cases for a third consecutive day, with infections jumping by more than 54,000. Many beaches have been closed. Independence Day firework displays have been cancelled as the United States death toll from COVID stands at more than 128,000 people. The governor of Texas, one of the worst hit states, has now made it compulsory to wear face masks, face coverings in public. One of the best ways to keep businesses open while also slowing the spread is for everyone to wear a face covering like this when they go out. Medical studies have shown that wearing a face covering slows the spread of COVID-19 and it protects you and your family. 11 minutes past six the time. Let's have a look at the Friday papers. And it's uh, indeed it's stories uh, coming out of America that's leading many of the front pages today. The Mirror leading with the arrest of the British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell, who's been charged with sex offences relating to her former boyfriend, the convicted paedophile Jeffrey Epstein. The paper says that Prince Andrew has come under mounting pressure to speak to the FBI following her arrest. Now, The Guardian is leading with the same story, reporting that Ms Maxwell allegedly played a critical role in helping Mr Epstein identify, befriend and groom minor victims for abuse. So look at the Daily Express. They have the Prime Minister's warning against reckless behaviour over the weekend as pubs reopen in England, of course. Plenty more on that throughout the morning this morning. Online, The Eye features a piece for, on plans for the BBC proms this month. It's going to see a socially distanced orchestra play to a mostly empty Royal Albert Hall.